And welcome back to this special Harry Chapin celebration. This would have been Harry's 75th birthday today, December 7th. And we uh, have been enjoying lots of great interviews this um, afternoon, this morning. And we have a really special guest coming up now who's been attached to Harry's hip in many ways for many, many years and so many of the activities that have gone on and before and after Harry passed away. And that is Charlie Sanders. How are you doing, Charlie? Very well, thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's been a little while. So well, first uh, of all, just a, a quick word about Pat Leahy and following Pat. As much as Harry uh, is a national treasure, that man is as well. And, and when he talks about Harry being selfless and doing the lobbying on behalf of the hungry, he neglects to mention sometimes that Pat Leahy went on to become one of the great propon proponents of artists and creators' rights uh, and musicians and songwriters in Congress for 40 years, in part in large part uh, as a measure of, of what Harry taught him about the importance of that. And that can't be forgotten either. I mean, Harry is still making a contribution to people in the music industry doing activist work on the other side as well. So it's... it's Thanks it's for bringing that up. That, that I, I didn't really realize that. I'm not involved in that side of things very much. And that's really fascinating to, to know that. Yeah, he is an amazing man, uh, Senator Leahy. And uh, what we want to, uh, what we're doing today is just kind of sharing some stories and how people got involved and kind of starting from the beginning with you. Um, I mean, many probably recognize your name for being so involved in organizing the tribute concert at Carnegie Hall. But how did it start before that? Well, you know, I think in a lot of ways, like today, um, there, there's always been, I think, a need for people uh, like you and me who, who admired Harry to a, an enormous degree to want to have a, a record established for future generations to look at to understand what this man's contribution was. And, and that's what the Carnegie Hall show was about. Uh, I had watched Harry in the 70s and, and gotten to, to know him a little bit and tried to absorb as much as I possibly could in terms of his philosophy, which was considerable. And it became obvious to me that this guy was a unique force in the music industry, which I never wanted to do anything but be in the music industry, that you would have to go back to the Paul Robesons and the Pete Seegers and the Woody Guthrie's, as well as the folks who worked on USO, like, uh, certainly Glenn Miller, who lost his life doing that, and, and, and the Andrew sisters, to see a performer like that willing to, uh, to put in the kind of time, effort, and passion that he was putting into social issues, and one social issue in particular. And I felt, I felt that, and still do, that it's very important to keep him as, as the role model for that, because it is possible. And the questions that we just asked Senator Leahy about, is it possible for someone to do that? The answer is yes. The unusual thing about Harry was that he was a pop star as well. So whereas Seeger and, and, and Guthrie were out on the road doing their folk thing and, and looked at themselves more as, as organizers, Harry was a pop star. Uh, who, who, was, who was doing this. So uh, I, that, that was what Carnegie Hall was about. It was bringing together uh, witnesses to this, uh, right. other, other great artists who had been touched by Harry and who had been lobbied by Harry and who were willing to go on record as saying, this guy made a difference in our lives. He made a difference in how we uh, conducted our careers uh, and placing uh, the... Uh, the need to uh, participate in charitable causes up front and as part of everything that we do in, in our art form. And that was what the Carnegie Hall show was about. And um, it was uh, a spectacular success in many ways in that regard. Well, and give us a little bit of behind the scenes flavor of that, because that cannot be an easy task to accomplish when you're dealing with so many artists just the logistics of it all. Um, oh, how did how did you get through it, or was it just hey, 
we're going for it, and what will be will be. Well, you know, I mean, Harry's uh, credo was that if you're not failing at a bunch of things, you're not trying hard enough. Right. And, you know, that, the other thing was I, it, he had a thing with the greatest generation as well. He would harken back constantly yes. to, to that generation of people. And, you know, the, 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 uh, the credo of theirs that um, the very difficult we do immediately, the impossible just takes a little longer. So it became, we're going to do this. And when you are able to get someone like Bruce Springsteen, whose level of integrity precedes him right. wherever he goes, uh, to agree to allow us to use his name to say, yes, Bruce is going to be participating, and he would welcome your participation as well. That, of course, made uh, the process of, of getting people on board a lot easier. But uh, most of those people were going to join anyway. Uh, you know, and, and Pat Benatar and Graham Nash and, and all of the other wonderful people who participated in that show wanted the chance to get up and talk about Harry's music and play Harry's music and the opportunity to be part of the Chapin larger family group that was there celebrating the life of, of someone who had truly made a difference. Do you have any particular fond memories or funny memories of that night and the because again, that is such a watershed moment in in the life of the kind of Chapin clan here. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, certainly the overarching feeling in the room, uh, which happened to have been the greatest concert hall in the world, right, was a living room setting, which was exactly what the Chapins are about. Um, it was exactly what Bill Ayers wanted it was exactly what sandy wanted uh so uh, the great feeling that existed between audience and performers and the complete breakdown of that wall between them w was what i remember most other than the fact that bill Ayers and i uh, backstage got to introduce springsteen to pete seeger uh and ah, it was yeah. unbelievable to me and to Bill, that they had never before really met or had the time to speak to one another. And um, that's something that I will always be, uh, I, pride may be too big a word because I just stood there and said, hi, this is Pete, this, uh, this is Bruce. But um, yeah, the, 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 uh, the energy that flowed from that uh, was, uh, was something that, you know, I, I am just thankful to have been a tiny part of. Yeah, that was a little bit of history right there that you got to experience, and wasn't it? It absolutely was. Amazing. Just amazing. Well, since the um, tribute concert, obviously, you didn't go anywhere. You really got even more immersed, it seems like, particularly with your work with uh, Why Hunger. Yeah, absolutely. We wanted to make sure that uh, what, what, what Jim Chapin said about um, at, at Harry's funeral, that it's up to us to fill our own shoes. We, we can't hope to fill Harry's. M meant that we all needed to pick up the ball and take turns running with it. And uh, I felt that the best place for me to do that was on the board of, uh, of World Hunger Year and now Why Hunger uh, after its, uh, its name change. And uh, it was my privilege and honor to serve as chair for six years uh, after... Uh, uh, Jim and and uh, and several others volunteered and 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 carried the ball for a while. Jen Chapin preceded me as chair, so I I I, I love the organization. It's terrific. It is carrying on Harry's work uh, and taking it further than Harry, I think, even envisions in terms of getting involved in important issues uh, that go beyond hunger uh, towards social justice. And uh, but the core. Uh, interest is still in, in bringing an end to hunger and malnutrition in the world uh, in our lifetimes. Well, with your interactions with Harry, do you have any particular memories of Harry um, that just kind of bring back warm feelings for you? Or maybe not so warm feelings, depending on what he was doing. Yeah, you know, Harry had a great sense of humor. He could be irascible as well. Yep. But, uh, the one picture that's always in my mind was the frigid cold night, and I like cold weather, uh, in, I guess, uh, January 19, 
80 or it was December, uh, December of 1980. And um, it was at the bottom line in New York. And there were two shows. Harry did the first show. And um, he knew that the crowd for the second show was outside waiting in the cold, lined up on uh, West 4th Street. And Harry, without a coat on, and at no one's urging, went outside and walked the line wow. of his fans, shaking hands and telling people how apologetic he was that they had to stand out in the cold, but that he was going to do an especially great and long show for them for the devotion that they were showing to him and how much he appreciated. Now, I have never, and I've, I've been doing this for 35 years, I have never seen an entertainer do that uh, before or since. And whatever it was that motivated Harry to do that, whatever it was that gave him the unbridled, unending energy to get in planes and fly across the country to attend meetings and get right back to the airport and leave because he felt it was important. This is a, an individual who's so uniquely gifted with passion and energy and, and heart that to not remember them and spend time for the rest of your life trying to remind people that there are opportunities and individuals who are going to be able to do this if we support them or if we try to emulate them. Th that moment that, of that night is really what, what sticks to me most about Harry. Yeah, we could use a little bit more, uh, be reminded of that a little bit more, particularly these days, right? Just that appreciation, humbleness, and hey, going out there and helping the next guy. Yeah, no, no question. His humility was terrific. And, and I was so appreciative of, of Senator Leahy mentioning the, the, uh, the spoken word uh, outtakes that we, uh, or actualities that we used in the gold medal collection. Uh, on on a lecture because we we in particular wanted Harry's voice as an activist to be remembered as well as his great great talent as a first rate songwriter and 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 performer. Well, Charlie, thank you so much for participating in this celebration today. I really love to hear those stories. You, you've had such a deep connection with this whole thing for so long, and uh, it's always just great to hear those stories. And um, really appreciate all your time today. Well, truly, truly my pleasure. That's great. And so we're get, we have a few more great interviews still coming up. In the meantime, we really hope everyone goes to betterplacetobe.org. We have lots more information uh, out there. And one of the things that we really want to talk about um, and mention is on there, because Charlie's in here, it really reminded me of it that one of our packages, the uh, Tribute Gift Pack, includes the Tribute DVD and CD from that amazing night at Carnegie, Carnegie Hall, uh, along with a fan pack of some just really cool photo books and news clippings and backstage passes and all that, as well as a replica of the uh, gold medal that was awarded to Harry. So. Hopefully you have time to check that out as we set up for our next interview. Um, and uh, there's also some other information about there uh, up there uh, for some other things that are available. Probably you won't find any place else. And uh, we will be back here in about five minutes, five, 10 minutes for our next interview. Hope to see you soon. Thanks, Charlie. That was awesome. Thank you.